from around the globe, it's theCUBE with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020. Of course, a digital event this year. Uh, we are not together at Moscone, but we are bringing together many of the speakers, thought leaders, customers uh, in this very important ecosystem. Really excited to welcome back to our program, Stephanie Churis, who's the Vice President and General Manager of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux Business Unit inside of Red Hat. Stephanie, so great to see you. Uh, have to give you a virtual hug uh, and high five here, but uh, you know, always great to see you and have you on the program. Oh, thank you, Stu. It's great to be here. And um, this is what together means today, but it's great to be together uh, with you again here at Summit. Yeah, the, the, the discussion is you talk kind of together apart uh, for, for a time <laughs> being. Um, we, we talk in tech that change is one of the only constants that we have, and there are more changes than ever uh, happening right now. So, you know, before we get into kind of your BU, uh, talk a little bit about, you know, some of the big changes. There's organizational changes. Uh, you know, I know we spoke to you about in 2019 at IBM Think and Red Hat Summit because you've, you've worked for both sides uh, of the yeah. equation here. Uh, give, give us uh, kind of the latest from, from your standpoint. Yeah, certainly the leadership changes, um, which have been public now for a couple of weeks, those are a big change for, um, for us. I think one of the things that has come through is IBM has really been respecting what Red Hat is, what, um, what we do, but also how we do it is very important and valued. And we at Red Hat believe in it so strongly, we're sticking to what Red Hat does best. Everything is open source, everything is collaborative. And um, honestly, I have to say it, it feels great as a Red Hatter to see Jim in the position he's in at IBM, um, Paul's passion, which clearly comes across in his keynotes and, um, and his passion for how we have an open source development model. It's great to have him now take over the CEO role for Red Hat. So it, it's, it's really exciting times. Um, I think last year when we spoke, it was, um, it was a bit of a wait and see and see what happens. And I think now the recent announcements really solidify um, the, the sort of synergy and partnership that IBM and Red Hat have and, and what our intentions are in the market. But at Red Hat, we still stay Red Hat and we're still driving things the way we always have. And that's great, feels good. Oh, that, that, that's great. And thank you so much for the update. So when we talk about your, your business unit, the, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, of course, RHEL, um, you know, I've got a little too much history. You know, I, I go back to when it was Raz, uh, you know, before RHEL and it kind of watched the growth of Linux to become really just, you know, the underlying fabric of so much of what we see uh, out there today for all of businesses, so many companies that could not exist uh, if it wasn't for Linux. And in the seven years uh, we've, we've been having the cube, of course, we've really watched that, that move from Linux uh, to not only be some of the foundations of what's happening uh, in customers' environments, but also a, a major piece of cloud and cloud native. Uh, so, you know, give us that that update as to you know here in 2020, uh, you know why you know Linux has been around for quite a long time, but you know is still as relevant as ever. Yeah, so that's a that's a great lead and ties exactly to how we look at RHEL in the Red Hat sort of entire portfolio. Um, when you look at Linux and how it evolved, it started out as being a bit of a cheaper alternative to Unix, but it quickly became, because of the open source way and collaborative way it's developed, it quickly became sort of this springboard for innovation because you have all these incredible innovators collaborating upstream. Um, all of that has fed to a whole different view of what Linux is. Right? Cloud exists because of Linux. Containers are just a different deployment mechanism for Linux workloads, artificial intelligence, all those apps are built on Linux. So it's become this standardized uh, foundation upon which innovation is done today. And for me, that's the most exciting thing because at Red Hat and in RHEL, our goal is to one, have it just work, right? It has to be the standard. And um, while sometimes that can be misinterpreted as boring or a commodity, it is anything but a commodity. It's probably one of the most strategic decisions that someone makes is which RHEL distribution, which Red Hat, which Linux distribution do they use? And at RHEL, we take real pride that it's built for the enterprise. It's built for security, it's built for resiliency. 
And all of that, build it once, deploy it anywhere, translates into also using all the innovation, all the containerization capabilities, using it across multiple public clouds. So it's really that combination of having it just work, be the foundation of where you build once, and then being able to leverage all the innovation that's coming out of the open source world today. Yeah, really interesting points, uh, Stephanie. I, I think back to when we we talked for years about the consumerization, consumer, consumerization, excuse me, of IT, and people thought that therefore there wouldn't be differentiation. You know, I'll just buy white box things, and th and everything will be off the shelf. But if you look at how most companies build things, they really hyper optimize them. Uh, I need to build what I need. I need to use the the tools that are available. Um, and I need to be able to be agile. Well, you know, I, I, one of my highlights last year, uh, talking to a lot of companies going through their digital transformation and a number of them uh, at, at Red Hat Summit last year, where they, they talked about both the organization and technology changes that they're making to move faster. And, and of course, uh, your portfolio is a big piece of helping them move forward. And, and that's one thing we're seeing. That, that ability to consume innovation and get the most and extract the most out of what they're running today in their data center as customers transform and take on this digital transformation, it's not just a technology statement. In most cases, it's an organizational statement as well. And how do you bridge both of those and move it forward? Um, it's one thing we focus um, a lot on, right, with our open innovation labs with a lot of customers as well, because it's not just about the technology, it's about the way we work and the way we do things as well. Yeah, so Stephanie, you know, every every year or so I hear it's like, oh, well, we've got a new way to do the operating system. There was the Jeff just enough operating system uh, for, for, for a while um, when containerization came out. Uh, there was a little company named CoreOS that was like, oh, we're going to make a thin version. Of course, CoreOS is now a, a piece of Red Hat. Um, so still with, with the cloud, there's always, you know, we're going to change the way the operating system is done. Um, but just love your viewpoint as to, you know, Red Hat has, you know, a few options uh, and kind of a spectrum of offerings, but, you know, how do your customers think about the OS these days? And, you know, how should we be thinking about RHEL specifically uh, in that, that overall spectrum? No, that's, so that's a great question, Stu. And we look at it as Linux and RHEL is the one thing that stays the same and helps you get um, the value out of all the work you've already put in, all the development work you've already put in and make sure that that translates to the future where everything is changing, how you deploy, where you deploy, what you deploy, all of that may change, but if you want to get the value out of the work and the development that has been done yesterday, you need something to stay the same. And in our view, that's RHEL. We build it with, um, in mind for the enterprise, right? A long life cycle, security, support. Um, we build all of that into it so that when you build on a rel, um, on a rel kernel, you can take that. If you want to deploy it in a container, you can deploy on rel itself, or if you need orchestration, you can deploy it on OpenShift. And that's part of the reason why you mentioned core OS. So we now have uh, rel core OS is within OpenShift 4.0. Um, and beyond, of course. But what we did was we tailored down what is in RHEL. It's the same packages, it's the same certification security, all of that work that we put in, right? We take the core OS piece of it, what's essential and really optimized for OpenShift, we build that into an immutable image and it goes out as part of OpenShift. It's not available separately because it's really tailored. What we pick, the life cycle is all matching OpenShift. And what that does is provide you an open shift experience that's easy to update fully across the board all the way down to the kernel, but you know it's the same Linux that you have in RHEL. And it's that consistency of technology that we really strive for. Um, same thing in public cloud. So when you build an image on-prem on RHEL, you can take that image up into the public cloud and know it's the same level of security and it just will work. You know, part of, part of my team and I, we take a lot of pride in the fact that it will just work. Um, and while that may not sound super exciting, uh, particularly in days like, like right now, being mm -hmm. dependable and being reliable and knowing that it's secure, um, all of that is really important when you run your business. That, those, those features are anything but commoditized. Well, yeah, I, I think what, one of the real values uh, that, that customers see uh, with RHEL specifically is there's so much change going on there. 
And you look at the Linux community, you look at what OpenShift's doing in the Kubernetes community, there's so much code chase going on. Red Hat packages that, make sure that you don't need to think about the, the almost chaos that's going out there in all of those communities, uh, but you package those together. So Stephanie, Rel8 was of course uh, one of the highlights of last year's uh, Red Hat Summit. So we'd love to hear you know, if, if you've got any you know, good customer stories, really the momentum of, of Rel8 as you've seen it uh, you know, roll out around the world, as, and then we'll you know, talk about the, the new updates that you have uh, this week. Yeah, great. So um, RHEL 8 was a big deal for us last year, as you remember, and partly because not only all the features and functions, of course, which we put into it, but also because we really wanted to reposition what the value of an operating system is within a data center and within their innovation future. So we really focused all the features and functions into two buckets. One is about how do we help you with the operating system run your business better, more efficiently, get the most out of the systems you have and the critical workloads that you run today? And how do we use the operating system to help you bridge into the next level of innovation? What's coming down the pipeline? Things like containers. And we really wanted to make sure that, as we see, you know, most customers are looking to how they digitally transform, but of course no one has the freedom to throw away everything they've done in the past. They want to build upon that and get value out of it. So we really focused on balancing those two mm -hmm. things. Now, as we look at in fact, one of the commitments we made, because we heard it from customers, was they wanted a more predictable um, deployment of our minor releases and our major releases. And we committed um, at the RHEL 8 launch that we would be um, delivering minor releases every six months and major releases every three years. And we have held to that. We delivered 8.1 six months after we delivered 8. And now you saw last week, we delivered 8.2. Um, this is what it means for us to stand by our word and be dependable as an operating system. And the beauty of the subscription with RHEL is that if you're a customer and you're running RHEL 7, um, particularly in times right now, it's, it's not that easy to get into your data center perhaps. And so if you don't choose to update to eight now, you can stay on seven until that time works. That's, to me, that's part of the beauty and the flexibility of the subscription model. We of course want to continue to bring you new capabilities and new features, um, but the subscription, our goal is to have a value subscription that um, you, can, you can get the most value from um, no matter when you decide to up, upgrade or move forward with, uh, with the different releases that we have. You know, well, yeah, congr congratulations on keeping uh, the, the releases going on schedule. Uh, it's one of the nice things about open source is we can see the roadmap out there. You, you've made uh, this, uh, uh, this this promise and uh, you, you're keeping to it. So uh, as, you, as you said, it, uh, the announcements been made, it's been talked about in the keynote. So g give us a couple of the highlights as to what people should be looking at and looking to learn more uh, when they dig into 8.2. Yeah, great. So, um... We really wanted to stick with a, a, a few key messages with it. Um, and they do really tie to how do we help you run your business and how do we help you grow your business? I'd say one thing that we announced and what we pivoted to um, with the 8.0 is we really moved to how do, we, how do we deliver what we called an intelligent OS, which means an OS that helps you bridge the gap and brings more value to you in your data center than you got before. One of the key aspects to this was adding in the capability of Red Hat Insights. And we added Insights capability into every single RHEL subscription that is under current support. So whether or not you move to RHEL 8, whether you had RHEL 7, um, if you have a supported version of RHEL 6, all of those had Insights added to it. And what Insights is, is a um, as a service on cloud.redhat.com, you can link up your servers and um, it will give you insight into operational capability. Is it configured correctly? Is it, uh, could it be optimized for better performance? Where are you on your CVE updates? Mm -hmm. And what it does is take all that knowledge that Red Hat has from all the support cases and things that we're seeing, what's happening in the industry, what we're seeing other customers have, and we can even proactively help customers. The feedback on this capability has been huge. Um, in fact, you'll see in the announcement last week, we've added a lot of new capabilities into this specifically for that reason. We've had customers say, you know, it's like having, it's like having more ops people on my team because I'm getting this input indirectly from Red Hat for things to look at. 
Um, and so that to me was probably one of the key aspects that as we look from going to eight into uh, 8.2, how do we build up that capability? And of course, last week you saw we added a lot to that. And I think now more than ever, we want to make sure that everyone who has a REL subscription is getting the most value out of that. And I think Insights is one of the places where if you have a subscription and um, you can value or you can get more value from operational help, um, Insights is a place where we want to help you. Um, we, uh, everything we had prior, uh, we have now bucketized into a capability in Insights called Advisor. It's really about performance, stability, and security and doing an analysis for you. Um, we've added in new capabilities around vulnerability, right? How do you remediate common vulnerabilities and exposures, compliance aspect, patch aspect, policies, and drift? Um, kind of all of those we've now bucketed in into that insights capability. So this brings a lot more value um, to something that we have already seen customers say, you know, we didn't expect to get this amount of input and um, continuous growth because we constantly add new new rules into that engine. And so, you know, what what we um, what we knew yesterday won't be what we know tomorrow. And we look forward to sharing with that with everyone who has a subscription. So this is a place where I think it's a um, it's an important place for folks to look, particularly now because operational efficiency is really key and security is really key. And we have a lot of capabilities in both. Um, yeah. One other, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Please, please, please go ahead now. One other aspect in that that I wanted to mention was we also added a capability called Subscription Watch. And Subscription Watch helps you get a very simple, clean view of all the subscriptions you have um, and where they're running. And that was one thing that we saw customers say there was friction in. How do I know where my entitlements are, how I'm using them across my entire enterprise? And Subscription Watch can help with that. So um, this sort of cloud.redhat.com capability that we can assist with and is already part of your subscription. These are the kinds of things that we really want to um, help augment this to make RHEL the intelligent OS uh, for the enterprise. Yeah, uh, so Steph, Stephanie, the comment I was gonna make is there, there's certain shows that I go to that every year you go to it, you say, okay, it's a little bit bigger. They announced something, they made some progress on it. What has impressed me most about the, going to the Red Hat show year after year um, is is really the the growth of the uh, of the portfolio, if you will. Um, so when I first started going to it, uh, it was you know a lot of the people there were you know the hardcore Linux people, um, and then you know there's some storage people, some networking people. As cloud and containers really grew, it really blossomed into this uh, really robust uh, ecosystem uh, and 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 growth there. So would would love just to get your viewpoint on you know the skill set because. You know, there, I'm sure there's plenty of companies out there that are like, well, you know, uh, I've got some people that are, you know, my Linux people and they might do things uh, that aren't there. But, you know, how do you see uh, kind of the skill set and uh, what, what Red Hat's doing uh, really permeating more and more of, uh, of, of companies' day-to-day uh, -day activity? I, I think one of the things that um, I'm most proud of is even since last year, it's all the deeper collaborations we have between the various product lines. Certainly, you, you'll talk with Joe Fitzgerald, and he and I work together very closely on capabilities like Insights. How do we add Ansible capabilities directly into RHEL? Um, and what that does is really help, I think, in any customer today, skills is probably one of the biggest concerns that they have. How do they grow those skills? How do they help folks grow and learn more and progress into the innovation areas, but clearly they still need their, their mission critical applications to run. And how do they span that? And I think what we're really trying to do is be able to bring the strength of the portfolio together to help a customer have more flexibility in how they leverage their skills and how they grow their skills. Because I think coming back to that statement that, that you made earlier, um, it's not just about technology, it's about how if you really want to be agile, it's about how a company is organized. And I think we're hoping that we bring together the strength of the portfolio so that a customer is able to um, leverage their organization and leverage their skills in the best way possible. I think another place where we worked hard in 8.2 on the similar lines of bridging the portfolio was 
you know, we announced back in 8.0, we were putting containerization tools directly into RHEL with um, Build a Podman and Scopio. In 8.2, we brought in the newest versions of Scopio and Builda. Um, in fact, in Tech Preview, you can get containerized um, versions of those. And so we're continuing to add. What we are seeing is that containerization is a journey for customers. Many customers just want to deploy a single container on a server, or they, or they want to deploy a single container in a VM, um, and they're not ready for orchestration. We wanted to put the tools in so that a customer could do that on RHEL, get started, get those containers deployed on RHEL, put those tools directly in. We added a tool called um, Utica, which is a tool built for security. It brings that security of SE Linux and brings that up and adds value at the container level. It's um, those kinds of things, as you see the bridge from RHEL into OpenShift, how do we help a customer bridge that skill journey as well um, along that path? And I think. Right now in Kubernetes and containers, skills is a is a big um, big area of focus. So the more we can help ease that across the portfolio and bring those things together is really important. And I know we're working very closely with Ashesh and the um, and the team there in order to help bridge that. Excellent, Stephanie. I just want to give you the last word. Uh, we we talked a lot about uh, the ongoing journey that customers are going through. So. Uh, give us your final takeaway as to how customers should be thinking about Red Hat in general and, and RHEL specifically as their journey goes forward. I think I think one of the things we're very proud of here at Red Hat is that we always, uh, particularly in the open source communities with our customers, with our partners, we want to roll up our sleeves and help. And that's, we want to co-develop, we want to work upstream with you. It's one of the things we're very proud of. And now, particularly in this time, it's um, we want to make sure that folks understand we're here to help and we want to make sure that you're getting the most out of the subscriptions you have. Um, and we help, we help you on that journey, both to get the most out of you can out of your data center today, but also be ready for the innovation that you want to consume going forward. And uh, we're collectively working across Red Hat in order to make that happen. But it's um, even though this is different and it's the, the virtual experience edition of Red Hat Summit, it's great to be together and be able to share the whole message. Well, Stephanie, the open source community is definitely used to collaborating remotely. So thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to see you and uh, we hope to talk again soon. Great to see you, Stu. Thank you for the time. All right, you're watching theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020 digitally with remote guests from around the globe. I'm Stu Miniman and thank you for watching theCUBE.